वेलकम आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस लेक्चर इन द कोर्स संधि इन पाणिनियन ग्रामर वी आर स्टडिंग अच संधि और वॉवल संधि द संधि दैट टेक्स प्लेस ऑफ अ वॉवल दिस कैन बी क्लासिफाइड इन टू टू द सेकेंड वन वी आर स्टडिंग राइट नाउ नेमली द्विस्थानिक एकादेश द फर्स्ट वन वी ऑलरेडी स्टडीड इज एक स्थानिक एकादेश एक स्थानी एक आदेश वन सब्सटीट्यू एंड एंड वन सब्सटीट्यूट वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड टू इंस्टेंसेस ऑफ एक स्थानिक एकादेश नेमली यण संधि एंड अयवायाव संधि यण संधि इज स्टेटेड बाय इको यणची अयवायाव संधि इज स्टेटेड बाय द सूत्र एचो अयवायाव वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ बुद्धीज संधीज Currently, we are studying द्विस्थानिक एकादेश where we have द्विस्थानिक two substituents, एक आदेश one substitute. This is also stated by the अधिकार सूत्र एक पूर्व पर यो हो सिक्स वन एटी फोर दिस अधिकार सूत्र मीन्स वन सब्सटीट्यूट टेक्स प्लेस इन प्लेस ऑफ टू साउंड्स नेमली पूर्व एंड पर प्रीवियस एंड लैटर दिस अधिकार कैन बी एक्सप्लेन डायग्रमैटिकली इन दिस फैशन यू हैव ए प्लस बी बोथ इन द संहिता मोड ए comes immediately before b and b comes immediately after a and so so they both become the environment mutually and in such a case now in place of a and b this is purva this is para in place of purva and para a and b you have one substitute namely c so the input is a plus b but the output is just c In case of ekasthanika ekadesha, the input was a plus b, but the output was c plus b. In ekasthanika ekadesha, only a got substituted by c, but in dvisthanika ekadesha, both a and b, purva and para, they both get substituted by one, that is c. This ekap purva parayo ho adhikara continues from six one eighty four up to six one 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 two. There are five instances of ekap purva parayo ho. Dvisthanik ekadesh. Guna sandhi stated by the sutra adguna ha six one eighty seven. Vruddhi sandhi stated by the sutra vruddhi rechi six one eighty eight. पररूप संधि इंगी पररूपम स्टेटेड बाय द सूत्र 6194 सवर्ण दीर्घ संधि दिस इज व्हाट वी आर स्टडिंग राइट नाउ सवर्ण दीर्घ संधि स्टेटेड बाय द सूत्र अकस सवर्णे दीर्घ 61101 एंड फाइनली पूर्व रूप संधि स्टेटेड बाय द सूत्र अमी पूर्व 61107 Let us now study Savarna Dirgha Sandhi. This is stated by the Sutra Akas Savarne Dirgha, six one one zero one. There are three padas in this sutra: Akaha, which is five slash one of Ak. Ak is A E U Ru and Lu. The first two sutras in the fourteen sutras, Pratyahara sutras. are captured by the pratyahara ak so akaha means immediately after ak that means immediately after any of these sounds savarne is 7/1 of savarna 
Savarna means homogeneous sound. So, Savarne means immediately before a homogeneous sound. And Dirgha is one slash one of Dirgha, meaning long. So, Dirgha means long substitute. There are two words continued from the previous sutras, Achi, seven slash one of Ach. Ach means a vowel. So, Achi means immediately before any vowel. This continues from Iko Yanachi and Ekapurvaparayoho. One substitute in place of two, previous and latter, earlier and latter, these two substituents. Having put all these things together, the overall meaning of Akasavarne Dirghaha can be stated in the following manner. Immediately before a homogeneous vowel, Savarne Achi, and immediately after Ak, Akaha, Ak is A, E, U, Ru, and Lu, these five vowels. In place of both of them, Purva Parayoho, place the long vowel, Dirghaha, as the one substitute, Ekaha. I repeat, immediately before a homogeneous vowel, Savarne, Achi, and immediately after Ak, Ak is A, E, U, Ru, and Lu, in place of both of them, Purva Parayoho, place the long vowel, Dirghaha, as one substitute. In order to understand the meaning of this sutra exhaustively, we need to also understand what is a savarana or a homogeneous sound. So the term savarana that is defined by 119 and 1110 needs to be studied. 119 is Tulyasya Prayatnam Savaranam and 1110 is Najjalau. Let us study the concept of Savarana. What this means is one sound is homogeneous with another. One sound is homogeneous with another set of sounds of, of course, on the basis of certain criteria. And this term Savarana is defined by two sutras which we already read but let us read them again. Tulyasya Prayatnam Savaranam 119 and Najhalau 1110. Let us study these sutras. Now there is an important concept related to Savarana and that is Savarana Grahana. What it means is that the sound mentioned in the Pratyahara Sutra, that is the initial enunciation of the 14 sutras at the beginning of the Ashtadhyayi, which is the base for the grammatical operations. So, the sound mentioned in these Pratyahara Sutras, which is homogeneous with another set of sounds represents that set of sounds. This is very important. Also as an important function of Savarana. This is stated by the Sutra Anudit Savaranasya Cha Pratyayaha 1169. Now let us study 119. Tulyasya Prayatnam Savaranam. This sutra has got two words, Tulyasya Prayatnam and Savaranam. Tulyasya Prayatnam is the signified and Savaranam is the signifier. Savaranam is the saudhnya. Tulyasya Prayatnam is the saudhni. What is Tulyasyam? Tulyasya Prayatnam. Tulyasya Prayatna has got three words. Tulya, Asya and Prayatna. Tulya means similar. 
Asya means place of articulation and Prayatna means effort of articulation also known as in this case internal effort of articulation as is defined in Paninian grammatical tradition also known as Abhyantara Prayatna. So, Shabda Rupa word form or the form of the sound is what is intended as the general qualified. So, what this sutra means is that the form of sound whose place of articulation and internal effort of articulation is same tulya as that of the other such sounds are called homogeneous to each other savarna to each other savarna of each other i repeat the form of sound whose place of articulation and internal effort of articulation is same as that of the other such sounds are called homogeneous to each other savarna to each other or savarna of each other and also let us look at 1110 1110 says na Najhalau has got two padas, na and ajhalau. Ajhalau has got two components, ach and hal. So, Tulyasya Prayatnam Savarnam continues in this particular sutra, and the meaning of this sutra is vowels, ach and consonants, hal, even if have similar place and internal effort of articulation are not to be called homogeneous to each other or savarna of each other, not jhalav. I repeat, vowels and consonants even if have similar place of articulation and internal effort of articulation, they are not to be called homogeneous to each other or savarna of each other. This is how the term Savarna is defined. Let us study this in some detail. The question is which sounds are Savarnas with each other. So here is a list of sounds which are to be called Savarnas of each other. So let us begin with a. As far as the traditional sound inventory is concerned, there are 18 types of a. Six raswa having some other features as well. That's why this plus sign raswa plus udatta anudatta svarita anunasika ananunasika. Six varieties of a short a. Six varieties of dirgha a. Dirgha plus Udatta Anudatta Svarita Anunasika Ananunasika. This is shown as A and six varieties of Pluta A plus Udatta Anudatta Svarita Anunasika and Ananunasika. This is shown as A3. These three sets have similar sthana namely kantha or velam and similar abhyantara prayatna namely vivruta. And so by the definition of tulyasya prayatnam savarnam these sounds are to be termed savarna or homogeneous of each other. Similar is the case with E which has got 18 varieties. All these three sets have same sthana namely talu and same abhyantara prayatna namely vivruta. And so all these 18 sounds are to be termed savarna or homogeneous of each other. 
amongst them only short e gets mentioned in the pratyahara sutras amongst the 18 as only short a gets mentioned in the pratyahara sutras so we say that a stands for all its 18 varieties e stands for all its 18 varieties by the sutra 1169 so a short is the savarna of all its varieties e short is the savarna of all its 18 varieties similar is the case with u there are 18 varieties of u and all these three sets having 18 varieties have similar sthana oshtav and similar abhyantara prayatna namely vivrutha so all these 18 varieties are to be termed savarna of each other amongst them only short u gets mentioned in the pratyahara sutra similarly we have 18 varieties of ru all these they have similar sthana namely murdhan and also abhyantara prayatna namely vibhruta so these 18 varieties are to be termed savarna or homogeneous of each other only short ru gets mentioned in the pratyahara sutra and 1169 says that this short ru stands for its homogeneous sounds namely all the 18 varieties then we have 12 varieties of lu why because there is no dirgha variety of lu so all these sets they have similar sthana namely danta and similar abhyantara prayatna namely vibhruta so these sounds are to be termed savarna or homogeneous of each other <coughs> only short lu gets mentioned in the pratyahara sutras then we have 12 varieties of a and there is no short variety of a o i and o so there are 12 varieties now these sets have similar sthana namely kantha talu and similar abhyantara prayatna namely vibhruta so these are to be termed savarna of each other by the definition provided by the sutra 119 tulyasya prayatnam savarnam similar is the case with i i also has got 12 varieties dirgha and pluta and they have similar sthana kantha talu and abhyantara prayatna vivrutha so these 12 varieties are to be termed savarna or homogeneous of each other then we have o there are 12 varieties of o six dirgha and six pluta they all have similar sthana kanthoshthau and similar abhyantara prayatna namely vivrutha and so these 12 varieties are termed savarna of each other only short, only long o gets mentioned in the pratyahara sutra then we have au which has got 12 varieties all these they have they have similar sthana namely kanthoshthau and abhyantara prayatna namely vivrutha and so we have these 12 varieties which are to be termed as savarna or homogeneous of each other similarly after having finished the treatment of the vowels if we go to the consonants we observe that there are two varieties of y anunasika and ananunasika which have similar sthana namely talu and similar abhyantara prayatna ishat sprasht as defi- as dis- defined and described by the paninian grammatical tradition slight contact 
or slight touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. So both these varieties of ear are to be termed savarna of each other. Similarly, two varieties of l, they have similar sthana, danta, and similar abhyantara prayatna, namely ishatsprashta. So they are to be termed savarna or homogeneous of each other. There are two varieties of v as well. They are similar in terms of sthana, which is danta and oshta, and abhyantara prayatna, namely ishatsprashta. So they are also to be termed as homogeneous of each other. Then we have the mention ku, meaning ka, kha, ga, gha, and ng. They have similar sthana, namely kantha, and similar abhyantara prayatna, namely sprishta or contact, touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. Now, all these five are to be termed as savarna with each other. The term savarna with respect to vowels plays a very crucial role in understanding the vowel sandhi or at sandhi and the term savarna applying to consonants plays a very crucial role in understanding certain types of hal sandhis or consonant sandhis which we are going to study soon. So, ka, kha, ga, gha, nga, they stand for their homogeneous sounds which are the five sounds. Similarly, you have chu meaning cha, cha, ja, ja, ya. They have similar sthana namely talu and similar abhyantara prayatna namely sprishta and therefore they are to be termed savarna of each other. Then we have two, ta, ta, da, dha and na. They have similar sthana namely murdhan and similar abhyantara prayatna namely sprishta or contact. So all these sounds they are savarna of each other. Similarly, we have tu meaning ta, tha, da, dha and na. They have similar sthana, danta and similar abhyantara prayatna namely sprishta. So they are to be termed as savarna or homogeneous of each other. And finally, we have pu standing for pa, fa, ba, bha and ma. They have similar sthana, namely oshta, and abhyantara prayatna, namely sprishta. So, in accordance with the sutra, tulyasya prayatnam savarnam 119, they are to be termed as savarna of each other. This is how Paninian grammatical tradition defines savarna. And we have studied different sounds that are termed savarna of each other. It is also important in this case to note which sounds are not considered as savarnas. This is what is stated by the Sutra Najjhalau. It assumes that there are some vowels and some consonants whose place of articulation and whose internal effort of articulation is going to be the same. So for example, a and her, even if they share sthana, which is kantha, and abhyantara prayatna, namely vibrata, so there is tulyasya prayatnatva, still they are not to be termed as savarna. This is what is stated by Najjala 1.1.10, because a is a vowel, and her is a consonant. That is why a and her are not to be termed as savarnas of each other, very crucial fact. Similarly, e and sh are not to be termed as savarnas of each other, even if they share sthana, namely talu, and abhyantara prayatna, namely vibrata, because e is a vowel and sh is a consonant in accordance with 1110 na jhalau 
he and sh are not termed as savarna of each other. Similarly, you have r and sh, even if they share the sthana, namely murdhan, and the abhyantara prayatna, namely vibruta, they are not to be termed savarna, primarily because r is a vowel and sh is a consonant. So, Najjalav applies over here and Ru and Sh are not termed as Savarnas of each other as a result. And finally, we have Lu and Sa, they are also not to be termed as Savarnas even if they share Sthana that is Danta and Abhyantara Prayatna namely Vibruta because Lu is a vowel and Sa is a consonant and Najjalav negates the Savarana Saudhnya to both a vowel and a consonant with respect to each other. Even if Tulyasya Prayatnam Savarnam gives the Savarana Saudhnya to them both, Najjalav negates it. So having put both these sutras together, we can understand what is a Savarna. Now what is the use of the term Savarna? We have already stated that once the sounds are termed Savarna with reference to each other, one sound can be mentioned in an enunciation and can be said to represent the remaining Savarna sounds. This is what Panini does in mentioning the sound in the Pratyahara Sutras. So he does not mention all sounds over there. He mentions only one of each set. So a uh, of the 18 varieties, e of the 18, u of the 18 and so on and so forth. And then he creates a rule 1169 which says that these sounds mentioned in the 14 Pratyahara Sutras and Ku, Chu, Tu, Tu and Pu, they stand for, they represent their Savarna sounds. So when you utter just one sound, it stands for all the 18 varieties in terms of a vowel. And if you mention just Ku, it stands for all its five sounds, class sounds. This is how Panini attains brevity and also the scientific base for the operations which are called the grammatical operations which are stated in his own grammar. Now the grammatical operations that should be stated with reference to a particular set of sounds which are Savarana, Panini uses only one sound and uses 1169 to state what is needed. He uses the word for example asya which has got the sixth case in it, six one of a as the subsidiary in 7432 asya Now even though the word asya is used by 1169 this asya means that the substitution stated by 7432 is applicable to all 18 varieties of a which are savarna of a. Now because of 7432, a in shukla, this a at the end is substituted by e. Shukla becomes shukli as an output. Now just as this short a becomes e, you will also have long a which is a savarna, which is stated to be a savarna of short a to be substituted by long e. So mala become mali and shukla becomes shukli. This is an important function of the term savarna. Similarly, in 61101 akas dirghaha, the term savarna is used essentially to state the vowel sandhi which is of dvisthanika ekadesha type. To summarize, the features of sounds noted by Panini serve the purpose of brevity in the system of grammar. The grammarian can mention a big set of sounds 
briefly by the mention of one of them and uses the term Savarna which is based on these features. Rules can be based on these features to account for the linguistic usage. And now after having understood the term Savarna, we shall apply it in the Sutra Akas Savarne Dirghaha and we have already studied the meaning of Akas Savarne Dirghaha but now we shall study the examples, first the prototypical examples and then the specific ones in order to understand Akas Savarne Dirghaha in more details. This we shall do in the next lecture. Thank you for your patience.